SUV market has always been a competitive one, but over recent years, the quality of what's been on offer has dramatically shot up. So too has the number of new entries. And while there was nothing wrong with the Tiguan, which was launched in 2007, Volkswagen realized it was time for an all new model. On the face of it, the latest version doesn't look radically different. It's definitely got a fresher, more modern face at the front, which gives it a more premium finish. It's also longer than the old Model 2, which is aimed at improving interior space. The cabin is exactly what you'd expect of any Volkswagen product. It's well designed, easy to use, and made of high quality materials. Getting a decent driving position is an absolute doddle too, thanks to a steering wheel that's fully adjustable, as is the seat. Although lumbar support isn't standard, which is worth noting if you do a lot of motorway miles. One of the big draws for any small SUV is the high driving position, and the Tiguan is no different. You get a real commanding view over the road ahead, thanks to a large windscreen and these thin A-pillars. The rear pillars, though, are a bit on the chunky side, so that can be a slight issue when reverse parking. This is where parking sensors really come in useful on higher spec models. The rear view camera and a self-parking system is also available for an added cost, of course. The infotainment system is an 8-inch touchscreen that shows information like sat-nav, radio, Bluetooth and USB. High-spec versions of the sat-nav is available, which features Google Earth, a DVD player, and a 64 gigabyte hard drive. If you go for the SE trim, you'll get VW's Carnet system, which means that you can connect a smartphone. It's a cheaper alternative to getting the all-singing, all-dancing top-spec sat-nav too. Space isn't an issue in the front or back. It may be badged as a small SUV, but it's bigger than you may think. The door bins will hold a big bottle, and there's decent storage in the middle and glove box. SE models also get handy drawers under the front driver and passenger seats. In the back, there's room for three, although there is limited shoulder room, so anyone sitting in the middle may find it a bit uncomfortable. Likewise, this central transmission tool will also impede legroom. Having said that though, everywhere else, there's a decent amount of headroom and legroom too. All models come with 40, 20, 40 split folding rear seats that also slide and recline, depending on whether you need more passenger or boot space. Not that the boot is in need of expanding too much, it's one of the biggest in its class. The large tailgate and wide opening also make lifting large and heavy items in easy too. On the face of it, the entry-level Tiguan may seem a good value for money when you look at the sticker price, but when you start adding optional extras or even looking at the 2-litre diesel, then prices do start to escalate. You can be reassured though that it retains its value well and two-wheel drive models are cheap to run. Don't assume the diesel is going to be the most frugal though without looking at the 1.4 TSI, especially if your annual mileage is low. As we said, the base S model is a little stingy on the equipment front. It includes aircon, 17-inch alloys, all-round electric windows and a touchscreen infotainment system with DAB and Bluetooth. It's definitely worth opting for the SE though, as this adds three-zone climate control, parking sensors and cruise control. You'll need to go for the SE Nav, our pick of the range, if you want satellite navigation. We've said a lot that any car with a Volkswagen badge on the front isn't going to fall short when it comes to engine choice, and that can be said for the Tiguan. There's a wide range of petrol and diesel engines on offer, but our pick of the range is the 148 brake horsepower 2-litre diesel, badged 2-litre TDI 150. It's a combination of performance and economy, make it the best-selling model in the lineup. The same engine is available with three different power outputs, either a 115 brake horsepower, which is a bit short of puff, or a 190 brake horsepower, which comes with a more expensive running cost. This is taken to a whole other level with the range topping 240 version. Petrol models include a 1.4 litre TSI with 123 brake horsepower, which is a solid performer, but just lacks pull on steep hills even more so when that big boot is fully loaded or if you're towing. There's a more powerful 150 brake horsepower version, but it lacks low down pull that you'll find in the diesels. The 2 litre petrol is available as a 180 or 220 brake horsepower version and that'll trouble many hot hatches for pace. 
and while they are capable right through the rev range, they don't have the in-gear flexibility of the diesels. The ride is excellent. It softens out potholes and speed humps, but it doesn't sacrifice handling. The suspension still remains firm enough not to have the kids in the back reaching for sick bags. It's worth noting though that if you go for the bigger alloys, it will unsettle the Tiguan over broken tarmac. But even so, it stacks up better than most of the competition. While the optional adaptive suspension does improve things slightly, it's really not worth the added expense. What's so impressive is how the Tiguan handles more like a family hatchback rather than a traditional 4x4. The steering is light and precise and you can really place it exactly where you want to on the road without little drama. There's also bags of grip too, especially if you go for the full motion four wheel drive version. When it comes to refinement, all petrol engines are smooth even when pushed hard while the diesels can be a bit clattery when idling or at pace. They feel quite hushed at cruising speed though, but they're not quite as good as the BMW X1 in this department. There's also a bit of wind noise around the wing mirrors and larger alloy wheels will kick a bit more road noise into the cabin. It's not loud enough to warrant dismissing it though. The competition in this segment has never been so strong, but the Volkswagen Tiguan has no problems lining up against cars like the Nissan Qashqai or Skoda Yeti, as well as more premium offerings like the BMW X1. Not only would you be getting a small SUV with a spacious interior and good sized boots, but it's also good to drive with a strong engine lineup. The only downside is that it is more expensive than many of its rivals. If you can get your head and your wallet around that, you'll be getting one of the best compact 4x4s on the market. For more information, search for the Volkswagen Tiguan on whatcar.com and to keep up to date with all our latest video road tests, click subscribe.